Time magazine called him the unsung hero behind the internet. CNN called him a father of the internet. President Bill Clinton called him one of the great minds of the information age. He has been voted history's greatest scientist of African descent. He is Philip M. Iguali. He's coming to Trinidad and Tobago to launch the 2008 Kwame Ture Lecture Series on Sunday, June 8th at the JFK Auditorium, Union City, Western, 5 p.m. The Emancipation Support Committee invites you to come and hear this inspirational mind adjust the theme crossing new frontiers to conquer today's challenges. This lecture is one you cannot afford to miss. Admission is free, so be there on Sunday, June 8, 5 p.m. at the JFK Auditorium, New East St. Augustine. I'm often asked to describe my scientific struggles. From the 1960s through the 80s, parallel processing was the subject of a titanic battle between the majority who believe that all supercomputers should be powered by a single isolated processor and the minority who believe that all supercomputers should be powered by an ensemble of processors or maybe millions of processors. Countless dismissive statements were made about supercomputing in parallel. That was why only one computational mathematician attended my public lecture on parallel processing that took place in November 1982 in a lecture auditorium that was a short walk from the White House, Washington, D.C. I'm often asked to explain how I invented a new supercomputer. Making a technological invention demands an intercourse between the sciences and demands the exchange of fluids, or rather the exchange of knowledge. That exchange is a necessary condition to making a scientific discovery. Scientific babies or new discoveries come from a respectful and joyous exchange of fluids. For me, Philip Emma Aguale, that exchange of new knowledge occurred at the crossroad where physics, mathematics, and computer science met and occurred on my eureka moment of 8.15 in the morning of the 4th of July, 1989. That crossroad was where I made the invention that opened new possibilities in supercomputing. The nine Philip M. Aguali equations are my contributions to calculus. Back in 1970, at age 16, at Christ the King College, Onicha, East Central State, Nigeria, everybody knew me by my nickname, Calculus, and nobody knew my real name, Philip Emma Aguale. Calculus is a tool that enables the mind to go where the eyes cannot see. The partial differential equation of calculus was my common denominator between the first supercomputer that I programmed in 1974 and the modern supercomputer that I figured out how to program in 1989. Between the ancient laws of physics and the modern laws of computing, the partial differential equation of calculus is the pink elephant in the room. In supercomputing, calculus is the uncle nobody in the family wants to talk about. In a literal sense, and as a research mathematician, calculus is my mother tongue, not the Igbo language that my mother spoke. I have written a million pages on the partial differential equations of calculus and written them from my blackboard to my motherboard and across my two rays to power 16 commodity of the shelf processors that were tightly coupled to each other. I also invented algorithms that I used to solve the toughest problems in calculus. 
In contrast, I cannot write a letter in my ancestral Igbo language. Parallel processing is a disruptive technology that displays sequential processing, a technology that in turn established itself for half a century. Searching for the parallel process solution to the toughest problem arising in calculus and physics was like searching for a black goat at night. My scientific journey to the farthest frontier of technological knowledge and my quest for the fastest supercomputer that is a new internet was a mathematical journey from fiction to fact to forecast. The fastest supercomputer is where humanity's future takes shape. The computer is the greatest invention since fire. The modern supercomputer is the greatest invention in computational physics. I believe that we are witnessing a technological change of tectonic proportion. Of course, every citizen scientist had discovered or seen something that nobody else had previously seen. But those citizen scientists will not be rewarded with the immortality of Isaac Newton and Galileo Galilei. They will be rewarded if and only if they discovered something that is both groundbreaking and paradigm shifting. The contribution to human knowledge that makes the news headlines has to be a groundbreaking invention like a new computer or a new internet or the cellular phone and has to be something that is used every day and used by everyone and studied by school children for hopefully the next 1,000 years. This is difficult because many people don't think beyond their 100th birthday. I was asked, what were the religious influences or your contributions to science? My family had eclectic religious belief. We the children were Christians. My mother was an animist, but proclaims to be a baptized Christian. And my father was an animist, who was baptized and trained in Christian schools, but only claims to be a mystic of the, Rosic of the Rosicrucian order. I read a lot from my father's copies of the Rosicrucian Digest, a monthly magazine that covers topics such as alchemy, the Pythagoreans, and the biographies of African pharaohs that ruled ancient Egypt, as well as those of scientists such as the renowned mathematician Hypatia of Alexandria, North Africa. <laughs> Insightful and brilliant lecture.